Hello and thank you for clicking on this video. My name is Blind Beholder and today I want to go through my Linux desktop with you, discuss some of the free and open source software that I use on a daily basis, go over my distro, my window manager, just to talk about why I use what I use, what some of the advantages, what some of the disadvantages of Linux and more importantly I want to cover Linux gaming because this channel is most likely going to be a Linux gaming channel. I will cover other subjects Linux related as well but most of it will be Linux gaming going forward. Right so just launch a terminal, clear that NeoFetch Okay, so I'm using Arch Linux. Arch Linux is a fantastic rolling release Linux distro. Y yes, we have some very annoying community members. We're not all like that. We're not all elitists. We're not all. We don't all think we're better than other Linux users because that's absolutely ridiculous. Anybody who gives you any grief for you not using a di non-beginner friendly distro just pay no notice to them, they're not worth your time. So we're using Arch Linux, I'm currently on kernel 5.16.2 which is the most recent kernel update as of recording this video. Uh, the desktop edition is Qtile which isn't actually a fully fledged desktop, it's uh, just a window manager and you have to install various packages to to get it to run as you'd expect from a full-fledged desktop environment. Uh, and there's some system specs below. If uh, I will probably post my system specs, resources, whatever, in the description below. Unless I forget, let me know in the comments if I've forgotten and I'll try to update that. And my terminal is the Alacrity terminal. It's a GPU accelerated terminal interface. So it uses my graphics card, my GeForce RTX to speed things up in the terminal. So if I was running complex commands, it would just run a little bit faster. It's very minimal. As you can see, there's, if I right click, nothing really happens. It just highlights uh, a great little terminal. Uh, if, you, if you've tried this out before and you're struggling with your configuration, I know DistroTube has a very good Alacrity config. Uh, that's where I started with my config for Alacrity. And speaking of, okay, and my window manager, as I've alluded, is Qtile. So why do I use Qtile? Well, it's written in Python, so it's not as light running as some other desktop window managers, but it it's for the sake of 200 megabytes of RAM. I've got 16 gigabytes. It it it, it it's not too detrimental for me. It, it's a dynamic tidying window manager so as you see here we're currently in the monad tall layout. If we press the keyboard command we can change it to monad wide. I'm just having five here. Zoomy which I think is a very underrated layout. This is an interesting one as well. Ratio tile, matrix, max floating and back to monad tile, the, the monad tall, excuse me, which uh, but yeah, um, they're the layouts that I use, I mostly stay in monad tall but certain scenarios different different window managers come into play. Uh, I will bring up my config, which is there, so if I press gg and go through here. I'm not going to link a download for this just yet because it's still very much a work in progress. It's not it's not at a state where I'd feel comfortable having people install it on the system. However, if you wanted to take some inspiration, feel free to pause the video or go back and pause to see how I have mine set up. Okay, so 
how do I use Qtile? Why why do I use Qtile over a desktop environment or anything along those lines? Well, for me, Qtile is easier to configure. I'm not a coder, but I can kind of understand the logic of Python. So I can look at a Python config, see why things work, how they work, and kind of take some liberties <laughs> from from other people's configs or follow the official documentation on the qtile.org website applications. Let's go through some of the applications that I use. So I use Thuna, that's my graphical file manager. Again, this is the convenience of Qtile. I can easily drag and drop from one side to the other. They will always fill out as much of the screen as they can. And it, it's really good for multitasking but yep so I've got my Thuna file manager uh, graphical applications so the thumbnail of this video I made using GIMP here we go uh, very good open source image editor we also have Critter for any artists out there Critter is a painting application I believe you can do some image editing with it as well, but it's mostly a painting application. So I have a cheap Wacom tablet plugged into my computer here. As you can see, pressure sensitivity is working fine. If I could change my brush, so we've got opacity, pressure sensitivity. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There we go. Let's drag that out. Got pencils, different brushes. As you can see, I'm not really the artist. It's uh, just something I like to play around on from time to time. And uh, yeah, it's a very nice piece of software. We'll close that now. Uh, Blender is another fantastic open source piece of software. So Blender is officially supported by Ubisoft. It re they recently invested quite a bit of money bringing up, bringing the, I say recently, it's a fair few years ago now, but uh, yeah, they've, uh, I know that Ubisoft used Blender for, for all their 3D modeling. Uh, there's a few other companies as well. I can't think of any at the, off the top of my head right now, but, Blender is very good professional grade 3D edit 3D modeling software. Uh, I'm not the best at the moment. I'm still still on my donut tutorial, as you can see here. Uh, but yeah, uh, you can anything you can imagine, you can 3D model in Blender. So it's very good uh, for recording software. Obviously, we've got OBS, the Open Broadcasting Software. Uh, this works for streaming recording like now so I'm ca currently capturing my desktop you can also I also have a layout for window capture if I want to capture specific just the specific window that uses less resources than capturing the whole desktop uh, very good recording software uh, video editing I use Caden live Caden live is Live is probably the best video editing software available on Linux it's not perfect by any shot but it, it gets the job done and that's the important thing a lot of Linux YouTubers or in fact most Linux YouTubers will be using Caden Live as their video editor uh, you do some very fancy things in this I'm still very new to it but going as I go forward I'll start experimenting with different things in my videos and uh, we'll see what we can do in there so for audio I use Audacium Audacium, if you're on an Arch-based repository, Arch-based distribution, is in the AUR. It's available as an AUR package, and what it is, it's a privacy concerned fork of Audacity, which was unfortunately uh, bought by a company. I forget which one, uh, but it, it now contains trackers. Uh, it's listening to you on. Audacity, so uh, not very privacy respective software. So 
I'd recommend if you're using Audacity to switch to Audacium or one of the other privacy respecting forks of Audacity. Okay, so this is a tiny window manager, so obviously a lot of system utilities don't work straight out of the box. So how do I get this up and running like a fully fledged desktop environment? So for my wallpaper, we have nitrogen to draw my wallpaper. Uh, this is the this far right part here. This is a system tray widget, which is part of Qtile. And in that, I have the volume icon package. That's for, um, that's the uh, network manager applet. And this is unfortunately invisible because this is due to this being a desktop. If you was on a laptop, you'll have a little battery icon here. But uh, this is the XFCE power manager. And I just have that there so I can click presentation mode if I'm watching videos for a long time. And time and date, if I click on that, it opens up my terminal calendar application. This is CalCurse. Uh, you could set this to launch GNOME calendar if you had that installed or any other calendar application you have installed. My memory usage, if I click on that, it launches HTOP, which is my system resource monitor of choice. Uh, the GPU section here, if I click on that, will launch NVIDIA settings. So we can see the current NVIDIA driver version, check temperatures, check fan speed, and so on. CPU will launch HTOP again, and I can click on here to change my uh, workspace layout. Okay, now moving on to Linux Gaming, so I'm just going to launch my browser and we're going to go to protondb.com and this is a fantastic resource for any of you new Linux users wanting to see which games are going to run, if there's any workarounds you need to get them to run, or anything such as that. So if we show more, we can see that 50% of the top 10 games are currently working in Linux. So these are the top 10 here. There's 10. So we've got New World, Nuraka Blade Point, Apex Legends and PUBG which are also showing as balked, not working. Unfortunately that is due to Easy Anti-Cheat software. Uh, Easy Anti-Cheat recognizes uh, Linux compatibility layers as cheating software unfortunately. So although there's nothing stopping you from installing these games. Uh, you won't be able to connect to an online game due to the easy anti-cheat. It's uh, the same for Halo. I don't know about Dead by Daylight. That's not a game I'm familiar with. Black, Des Black Desert though, again, it's the cheat anti-cheat software preventing you from being able to play that. But as you can see, everything in green runs on Linux natively. Everything in Platinum runs like native. Everything in Gold runs like runs fantastically, but there might be some like performance loss. So you might have a slightly lower frame rate, anything like that. But yeah, um, Linux gaming has <laughs> certainly come a long way in the past five years. I would not be able to. In this video, I'll tell you that 77% of the top thousand games on Steam are in a playable condition. That is absolutely unreal. So, a big thank, big thank you to Valve for pushing the for pushing Linux gaming. So, and speaking of Linux gaming, I'm going to launch Steam to show you my Steam. So, this is of course in a floating window of my yeah, I have my gaming window set to floating so we can just move that around like so and these are some of the games that I like to play these now this one uh, I want your feedback on this but this is one I'm wanting to play for YouTube I'm about 8.7 hours in uh, it's not that far at all a bit past the tutorial stage uh, a few missions in but yeah this is one I'm thinking of playing for the channel 
if you want to see me playing any of these for the channel do let me know do be aware I'm pretty dreadful at first first person shooters split greats good laugh but I'm not I'm not the best uh, Dark Souls I've played quite far into the first Dark Souls um, just past the Lord Vessel and the DLC areas I, I've got a bit lost though I uh, haven't really played it too seriously in a very long time Dark Souls 3 I know a lot of people like seeing Dark Souls being played uh, some indie titles Terraria probably one of my favourite games of all time uh, won uh, Labour of Love which is great uh, absolutely deserved it was, I think it was between these two games here that deserved that title but yeah and uh, these are some of the games that I play the Tomb Raider trilogy is native on Steam you don't need to use Proton compatibility to get them working and going back to Horizon Zero Dawn if any of you watching this have installed and are encountering some graphical artifacts it is due to this DLSS update uh, the patch 1.11 uh, caused some graphical artifacting in like shrubbery while uh, like long grass trees that sort of thing uh, this is fixed by launching your horizon gate zero dawn with the latest proton experimental as of the time that i'm recording this video so yeah so if you're having difficulties with that and you're on an nvidia card uh, that's 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 the best fix for you uh, if we go back to the proton db i type in horizon zero dawn see here there's some fixes for AMD cards right here as we were saying earlier Proton DB is a fantastic resource you've got all these not uh, even I've I've updated uh, a steam report here just to tell people what I've just said here uh, yeah so people will post here when they find fixes for certain graphical errors So, as I mostly alluded, I do consider this to be a Linux and gaming YouTube channel. So, look forward to a Horizon Zero Dawn Let's Play. If you click subscribe, you'll be notified as soon as that starts. I'm hoping to start that in the next week or so. It would depend on work and when I can start uploading, but I'm going to hopefully try and get an episode of that up every week. Uh, I will be doing, let me know if you would be interested in seeing my process of installing Arch Linux. Now there's countless guides out there showing you how to install Arch, so I don't really feel like it's necessary. But let me know if you want me to have a crack at that and we can jump into VirtualBox and start a, and do a, an Arch installer on VirtualBox. I'm not really interested in distro reviews. Um, it's very difficult to review a Linux distribution in a 20 to 30 minute video. Uh, most of them turn into theme reviews or desktop environment reviews. Um, they're not distro reviews. To be able to give a concise review of a distribution, you need to be using it day to day for an extended period of time a month two months that sort of thing i could review arch linux i could review void linux which is probably my second favorite distro after arch but i'm 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 not going to be doing distro reviews i wouldn't be able to do them justice and distribution doesn't matter as much as people think it does so but that's going to cover to my first video. Thanks again for watching. If you'd like to see future gameplay videos that I have planned down the line pop up, you can click subscribe. It's, you don't feel like you have to, though. So, and that's going to cover this video for now. Thank you all very much for watching and look forward to 
uploading again in the future. Bye for now.